Okay, again, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. You're going to want to watch the previous videos before jumping in here. Um, okay, so I'm in a folder uh, with the images that we've been working with, the ISO files. I currently have mounted uh, to the ISO folder uh, our Mint ISO, which uh, is Linux Mint, uh, I want to say 15 cinnamon. Um, so it's a larger, a much larger than Slitaz, uh, Tiny Core, or the Net Install for Debian, which are all uh, somewhere between 9 and 35 megabytes, where the Mint ISO, and this is the one without um, uh, the codex and stuff like that, so it's a little bit smaller, is, is about 900, just under a gig in size. Uh, actually, <laughs> why am I guessing? I can just say... There we go. So it's it's 888 megabytes right now. And once again, the, that's that's the one without the the codex and non-free stuff in it. Uh, the, uh, that one's a little bit larger. I think that one's over a gig. But I have it mounted. And if we go into it, so this is the CD ISO file system. And if we go into the Casper file, which is where on both Linux Mint and Ubuntu and probably most Ubuntu-based distros have their file system. We have our kernel. We have our initial RAM disk, which if we file out, we can say uh, that it is a uh, gzip compressed data file. Um, so that's what we've been looking at in most of the other distributions. But most of those other distributions uh, were small, and the initial RAM disk is the actual file system for the operating system. And if we list this out, you can see that that is about 32 megabytes. It still is bigger than most of the other distributions, and that's just the initial RAM disk. Uh, but it has a lot of tools on it that you may not get with those lighter weight distros, uh, so it's all depending on what you're trying to go for. Um, but you'll notice, as we mentioned in the previous tutorial, it's just file system squash file system file, which is about 847 megabytes. Uh, and that is the actual file system. So basically, bootloader loads, and to the RAM it loads the kernel, which is right here, and this initial RAM disk, and that allows things to get going, and it supplies the kernel the tools to mount this file system and start doing what it needs to do. But today we're going to look at how to uncompress this to a folder so that we can manipulate it, modify it, maybe use it for a true root if need be. So, and we'll get more into true roots and that sort of stuff in future tutorials. Again, keep watching every Monday. Um, I'll go back out, because right now I'm in the ISO, which is read-only, so I wouldn't be able to do anything, modify anything in that ISO folder. But from here, I can run a command, and you'll want to do this as either sudo or root, otherwise not everything will extract properly, because there are file permissions within that file system. Uh, we're going to use um, unsquash. Now, you do have to have a package installed for this to work, I believe. Um, let me really quick. I'm running Debian here. I'll use aptitude. I'll search. I forget if this needs to be installed or if it's already installed. I mean, it's probably installed uh, on some systems. Uh, we'll just do a quick search for that, see what comes up. So, yeah, you're going to want this package, uh, squashfs-tools installed, if you don't already have it installed. Uh, the other stuff we've worked with, uh, gzip and CPIO are pretty standard, are going to be on pretty much all distributions of Linux, you know, even if it's something small like uh, the open uh, WRT for routers is probably going to have those tools. Squash file system, uh, probably not installed by default, especially on those lighter weight systems, which is probably why they don't use it. They, they would take up more space. Anyway, we're in our directory here. I'm going to use the tool unsquash file system and then give it the name of the file. Uh, which is inside the ISO Casper, it's called file system, squash file system. And I will hit enter. And don't worry, it's not going to extract the full file system to the folder I'm in. It actually creates a file or a folder called squashfs or something like that. Uh, squashfs root, I think is what it's called. Um, so I'm sure there's probably an option if you look in the man file for this unsquashfs uh, tool that there's probably a way where you can choose what that folder is named, but I'm just letting it name that, and I'll probably rename it here to Mint when we're done, so I remember that's the Mint operating system. 
So it's taking a little bit longer to extract than the other operating systems. Obviously, it is way, way bigger. Where our other operating systems, file systems, were you know, five or six megabytes compressed and uncompressed somewhere between 10 and 16 megabytes. This one, obviously, as we said, was 840 some megabytes compressed. And now that it's uncompressed, you can see we have a folder here called SquashFS. I can, uh, let's uh, move that. SquashFS, we'll move it to Mint. So it's just now called Mint. And we'll go in there and you can see we have our full operating system here. And you also notice that this file system has its own uh, initial RAM disk image. So when you install this to a hard drive, which you could actually extract this to a hard drive partition, which we'll probably do in a future tutorial in this series, it's got its own image and kernel within its file system. So they're a little repetitive, but when you're talking 800 megabytes to add another 10 megabytes, I guess isn't a big deal. Um, so keep that in mind. We can now extract this, and this is a whole other file system within this file system that was inside the ISO file system. Anyway, we have this mounted now. We have the full, this is a full uh, Linux Mint file system, and I'm going to quickly do a du dash H. It's going to take a little while to go through here. It's going to calculate all those files. So it uncompressed to 3 gigs. So even though it was 800 some odd megabytes uncompressed, it's 300. So that's why we can fit 3 gigs, did I say 300? 3 gigs of files onto a uh, uh, flash drive that's under a gig. I personally, I really like, and we're kind of getting away from this with a lot of distros, I like when they're under 650 megabytes so you can fit them on a CD. But Ubuntu, Linux Mint, they come with a lot of software. Luckily, we can compress it down to, like I've said in previous video, depends on what compression you're using, but when you look at these images, I would guess it to be about three times the size once it's uncompressed. So, uh, and that's what it would install to. So if you were installing Linux Mint, you're gonna want at least three gigs for the operating systems. Obviously, you're gonna want more to be able to do stuff with it. I mean, that's a long ways away from uh, something like Windows Vista or Windows 7 or even Windows 8. I think they trimmed it down a little bit from Vista to 7, but they, they need like 15 gigs just for the base operating system. And they don't even have office tools and all the tools that come with a distribution like this. So I don't even know what's taking up all that space besides poor programming. Yeah, that's my little diss for Microsoft in this tutorial. I don't know if there's very many Windows people watching this particular tutorial but um just had to give that little jab there so anyway three gigs which i still think is kind of ridiculous in size but again like i said you have a full office suite you have gimp i mean you just look at photoshop is probably you know probably over 100 megabytes itself gimp is not going to be that big and it's all compressed firefox is probably i think firefox is like 30 megabytes I'm just naming off some of the larger packages that I know of. And obviously, uh, you have your whole, whole GNOME desktop, uh, or Cinnamon desktop, I guess, in this case. I guess, is Cinnamon the desktop or the window manager? I don't know. I haven't used Linux Mint in a while. Um, anyway, so keep that in mind. Here's your file system. When you actually go through the install process of Linux Mint, it's basically extracting this file system to your hard drive. When you're running it as a live CD, when you need programs, it extracts them and uncompresses those individual files as needed to RAM. So that's why we're able to run that. It's not all loading to RAM at once when you're running as a live CD. Although, again, you could make it do that. So anyway, uh, that's it. Two weeks ago, we looked over decompressing um, gunzipped CPIO files. And last week, we looked at decompressing uh, LZMA. LZMA? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, CPIO compressed file systems, and then this was a squash file system, which is uh, very common, especially with the larger distros. Again, different compression types will, some will compress to a smaller file size, while others might be a little bit larger, but will extract faster. So all depending on whether you're really going for the smaller file size or the speed, uh, the file size can be a big difference depending on what type of files are in the file system and what compressions you use. I never did any tests on really testing which ones are, how much faster they are, but anyway, a little bit of info for you there. 
we've now created three if I go back out one here we have our tiny core in a folder here we have Linux Mint in a folder here and Slitaz in a folder here just decompressing the basic file systems off the live CDs and we're gonna start playing with those a little bit here in the near future so I hope that you come back next week next Monday if you're watching these as I put them out. Again, there should be an annotation to the playlist. Playlist should have all the videos currently available. If you're watching this in the future, they're all available. If you get to a point in the playlist where a video is not, uh, you don't have access to it, that's because it hasn't been published yet. It will be next one will be published next week, next Monday. If you subscribe, you won't miss any so any of them, so be sure to subscribe. I also do other tutorials on other topics on Wednesdays and Fridays, so check those out. Comments below are great. I love comments, but the comments section is for comments, not questions. Good place for questions would be my IRC channel. If you go to my website, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with the K, there's a social networking drop down, at least as my website is designed now, who knows from years from now. They'll lead you to my IRC channel where you can come and chat with me and other people. It's not a um, help desk, you know, you may not get an answer right away. If you come in, ask a question, wait around, you know, if I'm not there, someone else might be able to help you. Don't come in and ask a question. If you don't get an answer in a minute, just leave. That's kind of annoying. Um, beyond that, um, I also, if you like these tutorials, because these topics are a little bit different than I've been doing for a while, they're a little bit more about the operating system themselves than programming, if you like them, be sure to let me know by liking this video. I see a lot of likes. I know people are enjoying these. I love tinkering around like this. Um, I was a little nervous about doing tutorials like this. I thought it might be over most people's heads and they may not be interested in it, but uh, if hopefully a lot of you are and I'll know if you like this video. So anyway, uh, again, thank you for watching. Filmsidechris.com, Chris with a K. There's a link in the description.